Jesus Bible and Current Events from a Christian Perspective, Battling Spiritual Wickedness in High Places, One Podcast at a Time. This is the High Places Podcast. Hello everyone, this is Jim. I've been thinking about something the last couple few days, and I'm going to pose a question, and boy, I know this is going to set some people off, um, but hear me out all the way through this. Is America, is the United States of America, an evil country? An evil country. And not just uh, in the context of the current world, but even historically. Um, Is America an evil country? An evil society? Uh, Now, this isn't questioning the fact that we have freedoms here that most people don't have. Uh, We have a standard of living that is not only one of the highest in the world, uh, by historical standards, it's one of the highest in the world. Um, Are we still allowed to go to church and own Bibles and all those things? Absolutely. Uh, Is it still uh, better to live in the United States than most of the other countries in the world? Uh, Yep. But... That's not really the question, Uh, because you can have freedoms and you can have a high standard of living, Um, but that doesn't keep one from being evil, doesn't keep a culture from being evil. Individuals uh, can have a lot of positive attributes and still, from a biblical standpoint, from God's standard, be evil. Now, one can argue that every country is evil because it has, it's full of people and people are by nature evil. But collectively, uh, as a group of people and countries, uh, and when I talk about evil, it's not just um, the behavior of the people. Uh, and one can argue that uh, even by that measure, there are varying degrees in varying countries. Um, but as far as impact, Influence. Um, people talk about, uh, you know, one of the first examples that comes to mind is Nazi Germany. Um, I don't think there are too many uh, people that would argue that Nazi Germany was an evil country. Uh, and uh, I don't think that, I don't think there are too many people that would place a moral equivalence uh, between Nazi Germany and other countries at the time. Same with uh, Stalinist Russia, or Mao's China, or uh, any number of uh, other countries that uh, people could talk about, historic ones, regimes, um, countries during periods of time that uh, one could look at comparatively and say, yeah, there was a lot of evil stuff going on there. Um, And uh, that evil... Um, sometimes had an impact on other countries. Certainly the Soviet Union uh, impacted its neighbors, uh, Eastern Europe in particular. Uh, China kind of kept to itself, Mao's China. Um, But when you look at the United States, um, yeah, how does the United States rank historically? We talk about uh, things like Nazi Germany, and I was looking up um, just statistics on how many people died in Nazi Germany, and there are estimates that range anywhere from 15 million people to a little over 31 million people. The most accurate number is probably somewhere around 21 million, and that's not counting the people that died from military action. So, I mean, they're killing, you know, 21 million of their own people. Um, But uh, as we talked about uh, a couple weeks ago, or a couple episodes ago, um, America's killed 70 million of its own people through abortion since 1973. It was an interesting statistic about uh, Nazi Germany and the percentage of Germans that died during that period because of 
in that case their government, a government that was voted into office, by the way. Um, but you, if you were a German, you had a one out of 11 chance of being killed by the regime, by the government that people voted for. But if you look at just abortion in the United States, we have about, what, 330 million people today? If we would have had another 70 million people, it would have been 400 million. Um, but those 70 are gone. So as a percentage of the population, um, we've killed off 17.5% of our citizens. And we did it for money. It was, it, the, you know, the Nazis did it almost purely for ideology. Not to say that uh, abortion isn't ideological also. There's eugenics. There's the Marxist environmentalists that think we have too many people. Um, there's just profit. There's just this love of death that uh, our culture has. Um, uh, we love death so much we entertain ourselves with it. So actually, um, you had a one in six chance of being killed in this country if you haven't been, if you, as far as a percentage of the population, um, just through abortion. Mao killed 20 million of his people. Stalin killed 20 million of his. But we've killed 70. And we continue to do evil things. And because of our reach, because American culture is so pervasive around the world, and we've talked about this a little bit before, and, and we don't even have to talk about like direct military engagements we've been involved with. Although you can look in just the last couple of decades, um, you know, what, what has been the human toll of people in other countries uh, from Iraq? Uh, look at the uh, historically massive migration out of Syria because, you know, we didn't like the government there. Uh, look at the upheaval that's happened in Libya and how that has spread to sub-Saharan Africa. Again, because, you know, we just decided we didn't like who was in charge there. Um, but you look at uh, things that are uh, promoted by this country. Our uh, president, in fact, just, uh, when was this? When was the date? May 31st, a couple of days ago. So our president uh, tweeted out, uh, let's see here. Quote, as we celebrate LGBT Pride Month and recognize the outstanding contributions of LGBT people, the outstanding contributions LGBT people have made in our great nation, let us also stand in solidarity with the many LGBT people who live in dozens of countries around the world that punish, imprison, or even execute individuals on the basis of their sexual orientation. My administration has launched a global campaign to, de to decriminalize homosexuality and invite all nations to join us in this effort. End quote. Invite all nations to join us. So, um, you know, you don't have small companies like uh, countries like Madagascar, you know, trying to urge the whole world to do something. But the United States has power and influence. And so this is from our president. Uh, who many people will claim is a Christian man. Uh, and they even hold out, uh, you know, Vice President Pence. Well, at least we've got Vice President Pence. But the U.S. ambassador to Germany, who's an out-of-the-closet gay man, uh, said that Vice President Pence is on board with this initiative. So, we're back to um, helping the devil... Um, desensitize people to sin. Take away the seriousness of sin. Now, that's not to say that homosexuals should be, you know, killed. Um, just like um, adulterers or thieves or liars or prideful people or covetous people. Um, 
they, because uh, you know uh, all of us fall into at least one of those ca categories and probably a whole lot more than one, almost certainly. I don't know anyone who's ever only committed one kind of sin. But the message to people that are living in unrepentant sin is to repent and believe the gospel, not talk about the great contributions that they have made. <laughs> um, but um, that is what um, the leadership of our country, with the support of many, many people, uh, is doing. Uh, if we look at this um, abortion thing again, there was a quote from uh, Bob Iger, the, uh, I think he's the CEO, uh, yeah, CEO of Disney who said just a few days ago on May 30th that it'd be very difficult for a media company to continue filming in Georgia because of the state's new uh, law restricting abortions. So we've seen already Hollywood trying to put economic pressure on the state of Georgia uh, for passing a heartbeat bill. Um, and so they're going to they're gonna punish the people of Georgia economically. In my mind, it's like a oh, good riddance. Why would you want a bunch of these Hollywood people running around your state anyway? Um, and so if they can have you sacrifice your morals for a little bit of money, uh, you got bigger problems than, uh, than having movies filmed in your state. Um, but this is Disney. This is uh, Disney who wants you to give them money to entertain your children. I guess they want you to be able to kill your children first, but if any of them survive, they want you to give them money so they'll entertain them. And if you hear about some of the garbage that they put on their ABC Family Channel, um, you wouldn't want Disney entertaining your kids. And yet, uh, Christians will spend, you know, lots of money watching their movies, going to their theme parks. And it's not like that. And so I'm, I'm, um, I'm fully aware that there, you know, some companies you can't get away, you know, try to buy a computer with an operating system uh, these days that, you know, where you're not giving your money to a company that hates God and his principles and his morals and his holiness. But when it comes to things like entertainment, that's 100% voluntary. And yet, uh, companies like Disney feel powerful enough to... Um, try to influence public policy and use economic threats to coerce people into killing children. <laughs> um, yeah. And then there's uh, all the uh, sex education uh, that's uh, going on in different states. Um, there's a, There was a story about uh, some of the curriculum in California that's, you know, mandatory now. Um, that they're teaching kids, and it isn't, again, I think we've touched on this before, it isn't just biological stuff. It's behavioral type of stuff. And it isn't like just in high school. This is, um, this is like elementary school. I, I'm going to read something that's, um, it, it's about the, uh, the uh, new sex ed guidance uh, in California. And I guess I'm going to warn you now, if you have any kids listening to this, uh, don't listen for the next 30 to 60 seconds. And I apologize for, I'm, I'm, you know, I try to find stuff that isn't too graphic. Um, but just so, uh, but some of this is, I think, I don't think pe uh, people understand what's going on, but I'm going to read this. Um, let's see. Um, this, so this is describing part of the curriculum. Uh, and it includes, some of the lesson plans includes um, condom relay races where 10 and 11-year-old girls um, have been participating in at school. So this is going on. They're taught how to put a condom on a model of an erect adult male penis. Students as young as 11 are being taught to engage in... Uh, risky sex acts, including experimenting with oral and anal sex with their partners. Eleven. So we're talking fifth grade. We're talking elementary school. And this is what's going on 
in schools. So as we talked about, the people that founded the Frankfurt School, they tried to do the same thing in Hungary. Um, and so it's nothing new, but you can see how it just it undermines. Uh, it's not only blatantly sinful, you can see that they're grooming these kids, again, to get them comfortable with sin. I mean, if a guy did this in a park where your kids were playing and tried to get them to participate in these sorts of things, the guy would be arrested. And yet this is going on in schools. Your tax money is paying to have your kids presented with this stuff and encouraged, encouraged to do this stuff. I find it interesting that... Um, the West, Western culture in general, Europe, the United States, Japan to a lesser degree, Australia, Canada, just kind of Western culture, um, who are the ones embracing all these, these wicked, wicked things and helping to propagate them and more and more starting to punish countries and individuals um, who don't go along with this. These are also the countries where you see things like um, reduction in population, replacement population. Um, so you see it in the West uh, where there aren't enough children being born to replace the people dying. Right? You need 2.1 children per couple to replace the couple and then grow the population. But that's, that's falling and it's, it's been going on in Europe which is why a lot of the leadership there doesn't mind all the migrants because they need a population to keep their social safety net going. It's interesting, even in Europe or even in Italy, Italy has the lowest population replacement rate in Europe. Italy. When you think of Italian families, you think of these big families. And they have the lowest in Europe. I also find it fascinating that these Western culture uh, countries are the ones embracing a lot of these um, Marxist environmental policies that basically undermine their economies. Now you have non-Western countries, you have third world countries and developing countries who sign on to these treaties too, but according to these treaties, they're the ones that are going to be the recipients of money. Um, this is a big uh, wealth redistribution from wealthy rest, uh, Western countries to developing countries. Um, you know, under the auspices of helping them with, you know, clean energy and all this other stuff. So you know why these other countries are signing on to this stuff. Because um, they're going to benefit, from, they're going to be the recipients of all this. But it's the West that's, you know, actually implementing any of this stuff and burdening its own economy. So I think it's interesting that the countries of the world and the culture of the cultures of the world that are propagating so much of these uh, these anti-God things um, are the ones that are basically committing cultural suicide, whether it's economically, whether it's through their population uh, decreases, or whether it's just through their behavior. How many people are dying because of violence uh, in this country? Look at the covetousness. Is there a more materialistic country on earth than the United States? I mean, really? I mean, you look at just the number of televisions per household. There's, I, I read a stat recently, we may have talked about it too. There are more televisions in people's houses than there are toilets. Huh. So there's more sewage coming into the home than there is leaving. And yet this, this country is just absolutely addicted to absorbing and consuming all this media, most of which is just profoundly wicked and just numbs people to the seriousness of sin. And, and we're so um, narcissistic and self-focused. I talked to someone recently who, and I hear this a lot, but it was interesting in this context, um, because he said he's tried to you know, believe in God, and there was a time when he did, and he was doing all this stuff for God, uh, the, he said he was doing all this stuff for God, but he wasn't getting what he wanted out of God. 
And I'm like, well, what did you want? And he wanted attention and he wanted uh, uh, recognition for, for what he was doing and, and, and what he wanted to do with his life. So he doesn't believe in God anymore. Um, he doesn't read a Bible. He specifically goes out of the way to not read a Bible, even though he has access to one. Um, because he, think God, he thinks God's a ripoff. Because his whole idea of God was, uh, if you do these things, it's like a checklist. If you run down this list, you go to church, you read your Bible, you give some money to the church, you, you know, witness to people, then God owes you something. And he's going to give you all the things you want now in this life. And we had a long conversation about, you know, we don't need Jesus for life improvement. Uh, go to a Tony Robbins seminar if you want that. Uh, we, need, we need Jesus for an afterlife improvement because we're all destined to go to hell because of our behavior. We're bound for hell. It's only because of God's mercy and love that anybody gets saved. That's why we need Jesus because he took the punishment we deserve. And, I, I, man, I talked to him about this for a long time, and it just didn't register at all. Not at all. He was so focused on what he could get now. And the only thing he wanted to know from Jesus is when Jesus was going to give him his stuff now. And I talked to another young lady who said she was recently saved, um, but we talked about kind of this phony Christianity that the United States is so good at propagating. That people believe in Jesus because they, you know, they want a better life. They want, you know, to achieve all their goals. This happiness gospel thing. And, and I told her that's not why you need Jesus. You've sinned like the rest of us. You're in trouble with a holy and perfect God. We need Jesus to save us. And I, so even... Even quote-unquote Christianity in America is so perverted. It's so far away. People don't even know why they need Jesus. They don't even know what the real gospel is. That Jesus saves us from our sins. That he died and rose again to conquer death and the punishment for our sins. And people don't even know that. And these are people that say they went to church and read their Bibles. and So, I mean, forget about the atheists. These are people that have been exposed to all this stuff. And, and unfortunately, this false gospel is spread across the world. I, 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 so, you look at it. So, we could go on and on for just hours talking about all these things. But there's just so many parts of this culture that are bad, like a lot of cultures, like a lot of countries. But because of our influence and our ability to propagate this evil, historically speaking, are people going to look back, and just like they look back at Nazi Germany, uh, just look like they look back at uh, different countries and regimes and empires of the past, and go, wow, they were really evil. The United States is often compared to Rome. Nobody would argue that Rome was uh, incredible in their influence, their culture. We still have, uh, you know, their architecture uh, today, um, their alphabet. I mean, all these things, wildly influential, um, did some amazing things. The standard of living was incredible. All you have to do is look at what happened after Rome fell in, you know, 600 years of the Dark Ages. Um, so no one would doubt the achievements of that culture, but look at the death and misery and perversion that was in that culture as well. And so are people going to look back at us that way? It's interesting, there's um, some verses in Jude that are um, maybe fitting. Jude verse 7. Even as Sodom and Gomorrah, and the cities around them in like manner, giving themselves over to fornication and going after strange flesh, are set forth as an example, suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. So, um, we're certainly a fornicating culture, an adulterous culture, 
a strange flesh culture, a covetous culture, a lying culture, a prideful culture. And just like Sodom and Gomorrah, we're very influential to the cities around us, to the peoples around us. And they were set forth as an example, a proverb. So is America a proverb for others to look at? Suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. So is America going to learn its lesson and come back to God? I know a lot of people who um, voted two years ago thought that's what was happening. But, um, I don't know. <laughs> um, and so, do we wind up choosing the lesser of two evils? And so, this is, um, this is why Christians have to be careful um, to put God ahead of political parties, God ahead of politicians, uh, God ahead of nations. Are there more evil choices out there? There sure are. Um, but the devil's uh, very clever. And if he can get us to choose the lesser of two evils, uh, then we've still chosen evil. And, this, and, and so I'm not just talking about uh, political leaders, uh, because um, all this comes from the ground up. Uh, in a democracy, you get the leaders you deserve. Um, but if the culture is rotten, the politicians are going to reflect that because they just want power. And so they're going to do whatever appeals to people. And you see it spreading um, from state to state. What was it? Colorado just banned like gay conversion therapy. And you can argue about whether or not that's effective. I personally think people just need to be saved and then their behavior gets changed. Um, regeneration. Um, but the fact that the culture embraces stuff and tries to stop anything that would try to stop sin, uh, whether through laws, whether through coercion, uh, whether through persecution, that's what's going on in America today. And so are we going to learn our lesson and turn back to God? Or are we going to be the American proverb and be set forth for an example for those to see uh, what happens to a people that not only reject God, but gleefully embrace sin? Will America suffer the vengeance of eternal fire? God judges people in eternity and nations in history. That's a quote from our pastor, by the way. And so, um, what's going to happen to America? Uh, I don't know. Some people are more positive than I am. But, the nice thing is, God is still doing things. I've seen things in the last just couple few days where um, uh, people have had an opportunity to uh, take possession of God's word and uh, initially were not interested. And then um, because of uh, the miraculous hand of God in their lives, uh, they had a change of heart and they wanted God's word and they wanted to find out what he has to say and so in those moments you see the Holy Spirit reaching out and touching someone's heart right in front of your eyes and something changes something they had an initial reaction and then they had thoughts and they were turned to God's word after having, having initially turned from God's word. And so it just shows you that uh, God uh, is still doing uh, amazing things 
and small things that may go unnoticed in people's lives every day to get them to turn to Him so that they can benefit from the death and resurrection of Jesus. So He's still out there doing this, even with people that initially reject Him. And hopefully even with a nation that seems to be rejecting Him and His holiness more and more. Thankfully, we serve a merciful and patient God. That's going to do it for this time. Take care, everyone. God bless.